Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're going to be going over the best maces in the game. And so there are two different categories of maces. We have one-handed and two-handed maces. And so this, there aren't nearly as many uh, variety-wise in the game, uh, especially for two-handed maces, but we're going to go through them and we're going to use my regular composite ranking system where we take into account a number of factors, including the swing speed for these weapons or thrust when thrust is applicable, uh, as well as the damage. And then of course we also include the handling and the reach, you know, the length of the weapon. Uh, those are all considerations that play into the ranking, and I find it to be a pretty accurate system. Uh, because of the fact that uh, these weapons are, the nature of the game is quite random where you can find them, I can kind of give you the region where I find them to be the most common, or like the culture that if you want to find them through battle, you're going to want to fight that culture the most often, but I can't tell you exactly where to find them. So as unfortunate as that is, that is the situation we're in. We're in. So let's just start it off with the one-handed maces, and we'll start with number 10. So at number 10, we've got this long beefy boy, the Steel Mace, which is a pretty white bread name. Uh, stats on this one are a weight of 1.9. It is a tier 4 weapon. We have a swing speed of 94, swing damage of 59, length of 60, and handling of 86. So, definitely not the best mace in the game, but also far from the worst. Uh, I... Just as a general note for all maces in the game, what these are best for, A, they're great at breaking down shields, so if you are going up against pesky infantry like Sturgeons or or even Imperial infantry where they like to use a lot of shields and it's real annoying, maces are great for taking them out. And likewise, if you're going against heavily armored opponents, they're also really good for that because blunt damage is the best against heavy armor in this game. And on top of that, you don't really sacrifice a lot because even though they deal nice high blunt damage, they're not very slow weapons to use, and oftentimes they're also quite long so you can even use them effectively on horseback. So yes, I find maces to be very underrated in this game, but uh, yeah, that's just a general thing to keep in mind for all of the weapons on this list. So like I said, number 10 for one-handed maces, the steel mace. For number 9, we've got this skinnier looking boy that's also quite cool. It'd be much cooler if it didn't phase inside my body though. Uh, the heavy flanged mace. And so uh, I guess I should have said the steel mace and this one are most commonly found in Vlandian territory in my experience, but I'll also find like all maces, basically there are three parts of the map where you're going to find every single one of these mace. It's either going to be in Vlandia, the Empire, or in the Azerai territory. Those three cultures more often than any other cultures use maces. Sometimes some of these will be uh, somewhat common in like Batanian territory, Sturgeon territory, even sometimes Kuzates, but way less common and I think it's probably because they get them as like spoils of war and that's why you find them available here. But from the beginning of the game, if you want to purchase these somewhere, uh, your best bet is Vlandia, then Azerai territory, then the Empire. Just as a general rule for every single mace on this list, except for the two-handed bases, which we'll get to. But yes, the heavy flange mace for uh, stats has a weight of 2.3 kilograms. It's a tier 5 weapon, swing speed of 81, uh, swing damage of 67, length of 74, and handling of 82. So, across the board, balances out quite well. At number 8, we have the spiraled mace. This is an example of one that is most often found in Azerai territory, and I think it looks really cool. It's just a big spirally ball on the top of a stick. I think I just like the way it looks. Uh, as far as stats on this one, we have a weight of 2.1 kilograms. It's a tier 4 weapon, swing speed of 87, swing damage of 62, length of 67, and handling of 95. Pretty fast and handles quite well and does decently high damage. Nothing really to not like about the spiraled mace. It is a little bit short, but most maces are. So again, that's the spiraled mace at number 8. At number seven, we have the Light Royal Mace, which you can see on my character's hip here. This is one that is going to be most common in the Vlandian territory. As far as stats on this one, we have a weight of 2.3 kilograms. It's a tier 5 weapon, swing speed of 89, swing damage of 67, length of 55, and handling of 93. So again, quite fast to use this one, and the handling is quite good, which makes sense considering it's pretty light and not very long. It's only got 55 for length, but still decently high damage. 67 for damage is not bad. So yeah, the Light Royal Mace is uh, a solid weapon weapon and comes in at number seven. At number six, we've got another one that most common is going to be found in Vlandian territory, and it's the Pernach. And now this one, or Pernach, I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but I say Pernach. Uh, the weight on this one is 1.9. It's a tier five weapon, swing speed of 88, swing damage of 64, length of 69, which is of course nice, and a handling of 94. So again, nice and fast weapon, handles quite well, still does pretty high damage. Nothing not to like about the Pernatch. At number five, so our midway point, we have the Calradic Mace, which is another one that I find to be pretty dang cool looking. And this one is one that I most often find in the Empire, but sometimes find in Azerai territory and to a lesser extent, Vlandia. So the Calradic Mace is pretty cool. Uh, I find it to be an effective weapon. As far as our weight on this one, it's 1.8. It's a tier four weapon, but we have a swing speed of 101, so nice and fast. Swing damage of 56, a little bit lower, but because of the speed, it balances out. Length of 47, so quite short. and 
handling of 106. So this one is one of the less good ones on horseback, but it's a very fast weapon to use. So if you really want to beat down your opponent's blocks and you want to do it fast, the Calradic Mace is an excellent option. So that is, like I said, number five. Let's move on to number four. At number four, we've got one that is pretty much exclusively found in Imperial territory, but through War and Conquest, you can find it in many other territories as well. And that one is the Imperial Light Mace. This one has a weight of 1.9. It is a tier four weapon, has a swing speed of 91, and a swing damage of 60, length of 70, and handling of 96. So this one's slightly longer, makes it a little bit more effective as a cavalry weapon. Handling is quite high, swing speed is decently high, damage is pretty good. All in all, solid weapon, balances out to be a really good mace. Uh, but yes, like I said, you can find this one in the Empire, and it takes the number four spot. At number three, we have the Cataphract Mace, which is a unique look. It's a basically just a tapered bar, but the top is much thicker because it, I mean, it looks slightly angular. It's hard to tell from these pictures, so maybe it's got flat sides to it, but it kind of looks like it's just rounded. But with all that in mind, uh, stat-wise, this one has a weight of 2.2, weapon tier 5, swing speed of 81, swing damage of 71, so nice and high there, length of 75, so decent for length, and handling of 89, so not bad there either. Again, just going to average out to be a pretty solid weapon. If you want to find the Cataphract Mace, this one I find pretty commonly in the Empire and uh, to a lesser extent in Azurai territory. So if you're looking for the Cataphract Mace, that's where I recommend looking. Empire first. But that being said, of course, through War and Conquest, you could possibly find it anywhere. I like this one. I find it to be pretty effective. It's long enough to use effectively on horseback, and it is excellent on foot. Great weapon overall, but that's the Cataphract Mace at number three. At number two, we have the Fullard Cavalry Mace, which is uh, my previous favorite. Uh, it's not my favorite anymore, but it used to be my favorite mace in the game. If you want to find this one, most often I find this one in Vlandia, but then after that, the Empire. As far as the stats on this one, we have a weight of 2.1. It's a tier 4 weapon. We have a swing speed of 92, swing damage of 62, length of 56, handling of 99. So very high handling, decently high speed. The damage is nice and high too. Length of it, it is slightly on the short end, so it's even though it's called the Cavalry Mace, I don't like it that much as a cavalry weapon just because of the very, very limited reach. It's fine if you're like, if you ride your horse into a group of infantry and you just swing down wildly, but everyone knows that if you do that, you're just going to get your horse killed and eventually you're going to get swamped and killed by all the infantry then. Uh, overall, it is a really good weapon, though, despite the limited reach that it has. So it takes the number two spot for one-handed maces. And of course, at number one, we have my favorite mace in the game, and also the best stat-wise, the Bone Crusher. So this one I find most frequently in Vlandia and actually Batania, but I have also seen it in the Empire and uh, the Azerai territory. This one is awesome. So stat-wise, we have a weight of 1.5. It is a tier four weapon. Swing speed is 97, though, so quite high. Swing damage is 55 so a little bit lower but still high enough to be very effective length of 71 so not crazy long but long enough that i find it to be pretty effective on horseback and handling of 97 which makes it very very good all in all like i said yes it has slightly lower damage than a lot on this list but it balances out to be the best weapon overall it's just very very good trust me try it out it's a great mace so that is it for all 10 of our top 10 uh one-handed maces all we have left to talk about is two-handed maces and there are only two of these in the game and they don't really blow your socks off, but I figured I'd include them anyway. Uh, the worst one out of the two is the makeshift sledgehammer. We have a weight of 1.8, weapon tier 4, swing speed of 87, swing damage of 78, length of 110, and handling of 75. Like all two-handed weapons, it can be used effectively, but I think the, as far as maces go, they really let us down in this game for two-handed maces, because they could have given us some, like, giant clubs to use, but instead, I mean, these, mind you, these sledgehammers are historically accurate. They look about right for battlefield sledgehammer hammers, so I have to give them credit for that. But just effect-wise in the game, they're not great. They are nice and long, so if you want to use them on horseback, it's really easy to hit people with these things. Damage is 78, which is pretty low for a two-handed weapon. Swing speed is 87, which is fast enough, but not great. Uh, really, all they have going for them is they do blunt damage, and they're long, so you can use them for uh, like running strikes on horseback, and I find that to be pretty effective at breaking through shield lines. Other than that, not the best weapons in the game, and the makeshift sledgehammer is the worst of the two. The regular sledgehammer, which looks basically identical, so I don't know what was so makeshift about the other one. This one, again, is nice and long, has a uh, decent handling, 74, swing speed is 85, but the damage is 80, so a little bit slower, but higher damage. If I'm choosing between the two, I choose the sledgehammer all day, but neither one of them is a particularly good weapon. As far as where to find these weapons go, they're quite common. I found them all over the map. Probably most frequently I find them uh, in the kind of your Western cultures, other than the Empire, because 
a little bit less there, but I'll most common find them in like Sturgia, Vlandia, and Batania. But like I said, it's a pretty common weapon that you can find all over the map. I just don't think it's a very good weapon. So that is it. That's that's all of the one-handed maces, or at least the t I shouldn't say all of them because it's only the top 10, but that's also all of the two-handed maces. So if you like using blunt weapons like I do in this game, uh, especially if you like collecting yourself a lot of prisoners so you can sell them off and make yourself some extra money, especially in the early game, this is the best weapons for it. So hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. But that's all for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.